Otto, this is why this video is happening today. He was a college kid who went to North Korea. Many people don't know why, but sometimes, and I'm gonna relate it to me, and this has nothing to do with Otto, but it has to do with my passion to make sure another Otto in North Korea never happens again. In 1990, when we were working on the democracy in Russia, which never really became a democracy, but the Reagan people were really fearful that if this upcoming election did not provide for a fair democracy type thing to happen, then Bush would get the credit. So the Reagan people, they encouraged me to go to the USSR and I went. And I was detained. I was detained by the KGB for 36 hours. And because we were in the process of starting normalization, I was freed. I was freed 36 hours later, mainly because an American company, a franchise selling fast food had opened up in the capital of the USSR. Communication had started between the Soviets and America. Within 36 hours, I was in the same bedroom that President Nixon stayed in, in Leningrad at the Consulate General's office. I went from being in an abandoned facility, scared to death, to sleeping in the same bed that Richard Nixon slept in in the 70s. I was detained in the middle of the night. It was freaky, but you know what? My experience is short. And we need to make sure that we don't have another auto. And how we make sure of that is we provide communication links. We need to get some American companies into North Korea. We need to start diplomacy and no better way to start it than economic diplomacy. I want to see every person in the world succeed, but I don't want to see anybody else captured. The last thing I'd like to say about Otto is in 2015, we started flash drives for freedom. And what that was is we collected um, videos. We collected um, American propaganda. And in 2015, we started sending it to the Soviet Union. Oh, not the Soviet Union, Korea. Okay, I get, I get my Cold War countries confused. But um, it was called Blast Rise for Freedom. And what happened was, is that Otto's trip corresponded at the same time the Korean government was very, very, North Korean government was very, very frustrated with these flash drives filled with American television shows, including Real Housewives of Atlanta and Real Housewives of New Jersey. I like told the CIA, dude, why the frick do we have Real Housewives? I mean, that to me does not seem like the right kind of American propaganda, or at least use the original Real Housewives of Orange County. Seriously. But, you know, that propaganda scared the shit out of Kim Jong-un. Kim, right? Because that propaganda, all those, that TV shows, showed the people what they weren't getting. Okay? So, obviously, they sent some better shows than Rural Housewives. But, you see, Otto was abused because of all the tension. But, had a Chick-fil-A been operating in downtown Pyongyang, there would have been a way to communicate and get Otto released. I'm a former hostage. I was at a meeting during the Obama administration where they had a top FBI, a retired FBI negotiator. I was, I met with Andrew Tice's mom. I met with two people that had their friends and family decapitated by ISIS when they were hostages. I was in that room going, what the fuck am I doing here? I was like in shock. 
the FBI was working on new techniques for when people are taken hostage internationally. And the only input that I could give is, thank God I was a spy during the Cold War when we actually tried to communicate and build relationships. Because we need to build relationships with our enemies. And the best way to do it is by doing business in their countries. I know that from personal experience because I am here today and I was only detained for 36 hours by an enemy nation, an Asian, a nation that was known for killing our spies. But I'm alive because I was taken at the cusp of some type of peace deal. Let's make sure there's not another auto. We can't keep sending propaganda into Korea if we're not going to try to build a relationship. Thank you.